Bowman. William the Conqueror had recaptured York from the rebels. Now he wanted to teach them a lesson for defying him. He began a brutal campaign of destruction to crush any further resistance, known as the harrying of the North. Villages and crops were destroyed. It is said a hundred thousand people were killed. With ruthless efficiency, William the Conqueror had secured obedience in his new kingdom. But it wasn't to last. It would be thrown into chaos by his own children. When William the Conqueror died in 1087, his favorite son succeeded him, King William II, known as William Rufus. But 13 years into his reign, disaster struck. While out hunting, he was killed. William's youngest brother took his place as King Henry I. But there was a problem. At the time, Henry's elder brother, Robert, Duke of Normandy, had been on crusade. When he returned, he was furious that Henry had grabbed the throne. From Normandy, Robert attempted to invade England to claim the crown from his brother. But he failed and returned home. In retaliation, Henry struck back. In a reversal of 1066, he crossed the Channel and invaded Normandy, intent on undermining his brother Robert's rule. His first target was Bayer. This rich and splendid city was one of the jewels of Normandy. Henry was to begin his campaign by unleashing his forces on the city. Bayer was about to feel the wrath of the English army. In the brotherly feud over Normandy, King Henry I set out to make an example of Bayer, a town still loyal to his brother Duke Robert. Henry's archers took up position on high ground outside the city and faced an immediate attack by Robert's cavalry patrol. Having deployed their palings, Henry's archers were well protected against the cavalry charge. They defeated the first patrol. As Henry set his sights on burning Bayer, more reinforcements arrived to join his army. Strail 
approached Bayer and saw that its towering stone walls would not be breached by manpower alone. Henry would need siege equipment and a defensible location to construct it. now called for the services of a blacksmith to bolster the siege effort. Hester's 
commending. With a blacksmith on hand, Henry's infantry would soon be ready to construct siege equipment. Henry's infantry could now construct battering rams, siege weapons designed to break open fortress walls. Strail 
It shall be timber this. What survey thing? Your way, you are. It's timber thing, yes, eh? What's the water? It's timber thing. There you were, then. With the power of battering rams, the English army could crack open Bayer's mighty walls. Henry's presence on the doorstep of Bayeux would not go unanswered, and now his forces braced for an attack by Robert's army. Yeah, 
ci vede adesso? But he knew that so long as Bayeux still stood, the city would not give up the fight. Flanboga a rod. Fair and on. Yeah, yeah, we are. Buscala, here the fuss. Yeah, we are. Yaru Hessum. Strail boring, Yaru. Hot me. Bayer's walls had failed, and Henry's men could now storm the city. Robert's garrison made a last stand to defend Bayer, but Henry would show no mercy in cutting them down and burning their city.
The timbre in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That timbre and shell. Bayo burned, and the people fled in terror. King Henry basked in the victory over his brother Duke Robert. But Henry would not stop until all of Normandy was back under the English crown. <laughs> 